Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We finally did it. We knocked out that 2020-2021 Panini Optic Basketball Retail Dual Case Break. One spot gets you two teams, 48 total boxes. <laughs> These are kind of long case breaks, so we're going to split them up. This is part one of two. Part two of two will be in the next video. It should be linked in the description as well. And that's also where the Wax Party randomizer will be. We'll do uh, recaps for the end of part one and then recap for end of part two. One case, one case, part one, part two. We'll make it happen. Big thanks to this group right here for making it happen. Uh, congrats to the winners in the uh, filler breaks as well. Let's double you up like Sir Mix-a-Lot. All 30 teams are in. And let's go. Let's roll it. Randomize names and teams four and a one five times each. One, two, three, four, and a one. Fifth and final time. We got Joshua down to Will. Four and a one, five times for the teams. One, two, three, four, and a one. Fifth and final time. After five times, we've got the Dallas Mavericks down to the Portland Trailblazers. All right, Josh with the Mavs, Andy with the Spurs, Joshua with the Jazz, Jordan with the Sixers, Nico with the Lakers. Got my Lakers. Roy with the Nets and the Thunder, Will with the Knicks, Clint with the Grizzlies, Joshua with the Pacers, and with the uh, last spot mojo, Joshua, Detroit Pistons. Jordan with the Golden State Warriors, Aaron with the Bulls, Joshua with the Nuggets, Andy with the Wizards, Jesse with the Kings, Joshua with the Clippers, Nico with the Rockets, Joshua with the Timberwolves, Jordan with the Raptors, Nico with the Bucks, Will with the Magic, Joshua with the Heat, Jesse with the Hornets, Clint with the Celtics, Will with the Cavs, Jordan with the Suns, Nico with the Pelicans, Aaron with the Hawks, and Will with the Portland Trailblazers. We're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. And then we will have uh, the first of two cases. Be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done. Settle in. We got two of these cases to go. This is part one. Second case will be in the video part two right here. But here's part one. Donruss Optic, right? Did I get the right case? 2021 retail, 24 boxes. This is 48 total, so 24 here. Another 24 right here. Again, that'll be in a separate video, part two. But this is part one of two here on a Sunday. Looks like a call on the field first down. This might be... The Niners might be wrapping this wild card game up. Yeah, McSub was right. He was saying earlier that it looked like both teams were kind of trying to... Looked like they were trying to lose. No one really wanted to win this game. But it looks like, looks like Niners are going to take care of business here. Are they saying fourth and inches? Got the uh, Nickelodeon broadcast on in the background.
and per the item description, no vet commons will ship. So sorry, Caruso, in this edition of Kobe White. Obviously, that'll ship. Inserts will ship. That sil that hollow will ship. These purple parallels will ship. But Lamarcus Aldridge, James Harden, those two will not ship. Inserts, of course, will ship. Numbered cards, autographs, obviously, will ship. A flag. There's Tyrese Halliburton, rated rookie. That'll be for the Kings. Jesse, we'll sleeve and top load those uh, later on. Our sorting and shipping team will take care of this. Such a long break off to be a little more efficient on the uh, on the sleeving. But obviously, Anthony Edwards and and Lu uh, Lucas, Anthony Edwards and. Uh, Lamella will take care of right away. Like this, Anthony Edwards. First of many, I hope, Joshua, who got randomized, the Timberwolves. Maybe some parallels here as well. So it's a false start? Wow. So Niners just need, four, need to convert, convert fourth and inches to win this game, but now instead they have to punt after a false start, giving giving Dallas 30 seconds to win this game. It's crazy. And they have no timeouts. This is gonna be tough. Wow. Got a little hook and ladder. The reception flips it to another guy. Interesting, and gets out of bounds. 24 seconds left. All right, box two. Save some of those Cole Anthony's too. It's an Isaiah Stewart hollow and our first LaMelo ball rated rookie card. Jesse, who won a spot in the filler, got randomized. The Hornets, first of many LaMellos, I hope. And obviously, since this is retail edition, uh, the autographs are uh, fewer and far between.
This is crazy. They, they are in Niner territory. Well, no, you got to get up. You got to spike the ball. Tick, 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 tick. Did they say, what did they say? Are they going to give him a second? Wow, no, they say it's a final. Delay a game. And the Niners win 23-17. Close. Yeah, I mean, Dallas could argue that they, they should have had I don't know what they were doing. That was that first that was a bad play call. And if it was a design run, then they should have been prepared to spike the ball much more immediately. I don't know. Ooh, the ref was in the way spotting the ball. That cost him the extra second. I mean, this is not as bad as Joe Judge doing a quarterback sneak on your own 10-yard line at third and nine, but but yeah, that was a weird play call. Unless they were thinking, we're going to catch these guys. These guys are not going to... Niners will not expect Dak Prescott to run it, but then they should have been ready to spike it super quick. Strange. All those Cole Anthony's will go to Will and Orlando. And a hollow LaMelo ball. Nice. Ooh, does this look good? I don't know. Just eyeballing it. If this if this PSA PSA 9, PSA 10 maybe? The centering might be slightly off, slightly pushed that way a little bit. I don't know. But still worth getting graded, um, Jesse. See what happens with that one. Lamelo, of course, having a strong season. And another LaMelo ball. Doesn't matter, Dallas center. It's on the Dallas center to get out of the way of the ref, right? Right, why, why, why run up the middle? It's a strange play call at the end. We have one more game, right? What channel is that on? Is that on, do we have an NBC game now? I like the kids interviewing the, the players. That's fun. They should do more. Uh... Wow, did M Mike Florio pick uh, the Steelers to win? Ooh. All right, who does everyone have in this Kansas City Pittsburgh game? I'm assuming everyone's have everyone's on the uh, the Chiefs, right? 
I laid the big number with the Chiefs, so I was wrong on, on Dallas today. I had Dallas minus three. I was on Philly plus the eight, eight and a half. So I was the only game I got this weekend was I I laid the points with Buffalo. I felt pretty comfortable with that. I think if you go to the break schedule and go to the Joe's Picks tab, I've got a couple TD props as well. I like trying to pick who's going to win, who's going to get touchdowns. I don't think Juszczyk or Cedric Wilson had touchdowns today. My touchdown props for tonight's game, I got one for each team. Najee Harris TD, a little bit better than uh, a little bit under... A one to one pick plus one twenty, and I'm a Mahomes touchdown plus four hundred. I feel like when it comes to the playoffs, QBs can get a little more aggressive about, especially QBs with legs, can be a little more aggressive about. Hey, let's let's run this in. Start bringing out different plays from the old playbook. those purple parallels that we've been seeing are are not numbered but they are exclusive to this retail set so that Steph Curry will ship Juju is back tonight how much does how much does that affect the line Maybe a point or two. But one big one big play out of Juju Smith Schuster, that, that could be the difference. We got Mark B pulling for the Steelers tonight. Mark's also saying won a CD flawless emerald to five yesterday, but did not play well today. It's one to hold on to. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe he has a strong year next year. Well, what's the uh, what's the what's the post mortem for the for the wild card losers this weekend? My Raiders. I think we're ahead of schedule. I feel like the same way about the Eagles. The Eagles Raiders are a little ahead of schedule. You know, this just need to put put a few more pieces together here and there. A couple more, a couple good drafts in the future. A couple good free agent windows, and I think uh, you know they might be able to make some noise in the playoffs. But I think the off season, this off season especially, um, for uh, is especially a big big deal for the Raiders, especially. They got to make some. They got to think about whether they want to keep GM Mike Mayock or not. They got to see if interim coach Rich Basaccia turns into a head full time coach, et cetera, et cetera. I think Eagles kind of have their staff kind of set, so they just need to make some good moves in free agency, have another good draft or two, and they may be in, in, in a good spot. What about the uh, New England? New England seems like like they're they're doing pretty well with Mac Jones, so they just really just need to kind of refresh the squad, add add some people. You know, hopefully Mac Jones keeps evolving as a player.
What about the Cowboys? What are the What do the Cowboys need to do? I feel like the Cowboys really started off the season hot. They have a pretty fun offense, a lot of weapons there, but it just didn't quite work out. Defense, maybe? Defense used to be one of their strong suits, but... And their offense has sputtered a little bit. Yeah, what's going on with the Dolphins, Mark? I thought the Dolphins kind of had... I mean, maybe there were, there were still question marks about what to do with the quarterback, but I thought I thought the coaching staff was, was, was set. There, there were some pieces there. But now you're kind of... I don't know. Changing the coach pretty disruptive. You know, th then you've got young quarterback... Young quarterback having to relearn a completely different offense. I mean, I'm assuming they're going to get, you know, a coach who's going to who has different ideas on what to do with Tua. I don't know if that's for the best or not. If that coach even wants to keep Tua or not. That's another question. The owner was just being dumb, says Mark. Yeah, it seemed like they bailed on Brian Flores a little too too early. I, and I th I think he's getting. I think he's getting head coaching offers already. I think he's he's taking phone calls for head coaching jobs already, so which goes to show you what the league thinks about Brian Flores. He's gonna have another job pretty quickly. So that seemed a little bit of a I don't know. Kind of pulled the the parachute string a little too early. James Weissman's will go to uh, Jordan and the Golden State Warriors. Case done. We should be talking about Dave Roberts and not Brian Flores. What about Dave Roberts? I wish I, I, I wish we should be pitchers and catchers should be reporting s shortly. We should be talking about baseball. We should be talking about free agents, and signings, and all that. No, we're in the middle of a lockout. Now that my Raiders are out of the playoffs, now now I'm supposed to shift to and the, my Lakers aren't playing well at all. So my brain should be shifting to baseball, and yet. Nothing.
Another box. What's going on in uh what's going on in basketball? Draymond Green to miss at least two weeks, according to hoopsrumors.com. Heat waving Marcus Garrett will give Kyle Guy a two-way contract. Marcus Saul saying a door is not closed on the NBA comeback. Kevin Durant, big MCL strain. And he's going to be out four to six weeks. Should be back in time for the playoffs. With plenty of time to kind of knock the rust off, but, but I guess whatever case he had for the MVP this year is probably out. Mavericks waving Willie Colley Stein, signing Marquis Chris to a two-year deal. No structural damage to Zach Levine's knee. Anthony Davis could return during the late January trip. CJ McCollum set to return on Monday. Kevin, what's up? What are the cards we're looking for in these packs? I'm aware more of a hockey guy, but really curious about basketball. Basically, you're just looking for the uh, the read. This is retail edition, so their autographs are few and far between. So we're looking for parallels mostly of the top picks, Anthony Edwards for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and LaMelo Ball for the Charlotte Hornets. And there's some other players, too, that have some really good value as well. James Weissman, Obi Toppin, Tyrese Halliburton, so on and so forth. Cole Anthony for the Orlando Magic. Now, we're looking for those rated rookie cards for those players, but you definitely want to see... Uh, Hollow, refractor parallels, and anything low numbered here in these retail sets. And cards like this are also exclusive to these retail sets, so of course those will ship as well. You know, if you get like a low numbered LeBron James card, those will probably sell well, resell well in the secondary market too. Oh, and here's a rare autograph here. It's Josh Green, signature series auto for Joshua. Joshua Edlitz with Joshua Green. Sig series autograph. There's a LaMelo ball right there. Just a rated rookie, base rated rookie card, but those will add up. Is it just me, or is, is it a little foggy out there? It's like a little fog rolling in. Not exactly fog bowl fog, but a little bit of fog out there. j Dog, what's going on? How are you? Are you seeing the fog as well? 
I'm seeing a little fog. Yeah, it does look a little weird in that in this Pittsburgh at Kansas City game here. It's on in the background. Could be a little fog. Or was it maybe fireworks? Pre-game fireworks? I don't know. It's cold. And an Anthony Edwards autograph? Yes. Wow. Out of a retail box? That's pretty nice. Joshua Edlitz, Minnesota Timberwolves. Bought that spot straight up. Gets randomized the Timberwolves. Gets the Anthony Edwards auto. Nice. Congrats. Maybe we can find an Anthony Edwards hollow. That would be nice. Another Anthony Edwards, all those rated rookie, even the base cards will all will all add up. Definitely looking for the parallels though.
All right, next box. Got a ways to go. Anyone actually in this break, watching this break live? Or am I just flying solo on this? Crickets. I guess it's just just me, just me and the Kansas City Pittsburgh game or Pittsburgh at Kansas City game. Boom is in the house. What up, Boone? Nice, Boone. That's a, that's a good way to two-screen two screen it. Watch the game on TV. Watch Jaspies on the phone. What do I think about the Cowboy Niners game? Well, I think it started off kind of slow. But then the Cowboys really started picking it up in the third, third and fourth quarter. Obi Toppin would go to Will in the Knicks. But it really started to heat up, which I, uh, which as a neutral fan, I liked. I was on Dallas minus three, but that was that was an error. Also on Kansas City, minus a bunch of points. I laid like the double digit points. But so far, it's not, that's not looking good either. I need, kind of need them to score early and often. Of course, with the Kansas City offense, I could explode at any time. So we'll see what happens. What are, where do the Cowboys, any Cowboys fans here? Where do the Cowboys go from here? Really, Boone saying Cowboys fans were throwing bottles on the field after the game? Well, that, that last play call, I don't know if that was Dak Prescott going rogue or if that was actually the play call. But Dak Prescott running, Dak Prescott running is fine, but with that many seconds left, them running up the middle of the field Seem like an seem like an odd way to go. Jade, you think I'm good? Chiefs winning by 14. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Ooh, wow! A Lamelo ball purple. For Charlotte, Jesse with the Charlotte Hornets. See, these are the kind of parallels that I want to see here. Nice. Nice. 
I believe those purple parallels are exclusive to to this set. Ah, I see. Dak Prescott was supposed to give the ball to the ref. Right, so the ref could set the ball. Jesse with the Kings, you'll get all those uh, Halliburtons as well. Got about another 30, 40 minutes to go here. And then at the end of this, uh, this case, we'll do a recap video, and then part two will be in a separate video. That's the second case of this dual case break. What about uh, is Mike McCarthy's job safe? I don't I don't know what the buzz is in Dallas. But are, are are Dallas fans sold on on Coach Mike McCarthy? Does he get let go? Does Dallas go a different direction? Stephen Flat thinking uh, McCarthy gone, Kellen Moore head coach. Kaim, what's up? I have no idea. I'll have to go through orders after this. When I know, you'll know. Keep an eye on the schedule, pinned in the chat, drop frequently in the chat. You can even bookmark that too. I'll update the schedule after I finish it. I think this, these breaks are taking a little bit longer than I thought, so we may run out of time for some other breaks. Stephen Flat saying McCarthy's gone. The offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, is going to be promoted to head coach. Wonder though if you if you keep Kellen Moore as like a just keep him out of the head coach head coaching can be such an administrative hassle 
you know, you just keep Mike McCarthy on as a as a head coach, have him deal with all the the press conference nonsense. Kellen Moore just focuses on the offense, unless unless Kellen Moore is an, is a good candidate to be a head coach elsewhere. Then maybe the Cowboys do try to keep him and say, hey, how about you be our head coach? So the offseason could be kind of crazy. Like these packs, these packs are crazy. I feel like these packs are adding like another 20 minutes to the sprint. Yeah, that's a good question, Mark H. Do they keep the interim head coach or do they go after someone else? Yeah, Raiders have a lot of... Uh, there's Vernon Carey, LaMelo's teammate. Going to Jesse along with that rated rookie card. Yeah, the Raiders have a lot of, uh, a lot of questions that need answering. Do they keep interim head coach Rich Passaccia, who had done a great job? Do they go after another head coach? You know, do they keep the GM? Mike Mayock? I guess it depends on who's out there and who wants to be the Raiders head coach. I personally think I personally think you, you you gotta move the GM. You know, I'd like to see a little more a little more classic NFL GM experience. Not that Mike Mayock did a horrible job, but I don't know. I'd like to see someone a little, little with a little more experience in that front office. And if we can get, uh, I mean, the, the rumors have been uh, Jim Harbaugh, right? Jim Harbaugh, Michigan coach currently, was part of the Raiders organization. I think he was a quarterback's coach early in his career. Has a good relationship with Mark Davis, the owner. I think if Jim Harbaugh can come on a board, then I think you, you kind of have to take that opportunity. He has proven himself on the pro and college level. Former player, you know, I think I think players he can relate to players. If you can get Jim Harbaugh, then I think you you run with that. See what Jim thinks about GMs as well, so they can work together. Otherwise, yeah, you probably you probably short of that, you probably uh, resign. Rich Bisaccia, offer him the head coaching job for give him a two, three year deal or something like that. Then they have to figure out. Then they have to figure out what do you do with Derek Carr, who's in his the final year of his second or third contract, second contract. So he's in the final, going into the final year of his deal. So do you? What do you do? Do you extend him? Is he the answer? I think Raider Nation's pretty pretty split on on Derek Carr. But if you have the opportunity to get a Russell Wilson or an Aaron Rodgers, do you pull the trigger on that? I think you, you kind of have to. I guess what else do the Raiders need to do? I get they really need to improve that offensive line. 
whether through free agency or whether through just natural evolution of that young offensive line. Could use another wide receiver. You know, Zay Jones and Deshaun Jackson have played admirably, but I think you need to incorporate... Henry Ruggs would have been the answer, but you have to incorporate that kind of player into that offense to stretch the field. Did Mahomes just get picked off? You know, and keep, and keep hopefully that young defense keeps evolving. They've got some pieces there. Just add in the draft, add in the in free agency with the defense. But quarterback, big question there. Alright, another box. Kind of thing, yeah, how do they not give that interim coach a shot after all they've been through and still make the playoffs? I, I agree. I mean the only reason why you would move on from him is if you can get like a big name like Jim Harbaugh. Otherwise, yeah, why bother? Why bother looking for looking for another coach? Just go with the one you have at that point. Onwards. Mark H is thinking Carr not the guy, in his opinion. But he's gold compared to some of the other vet options out there, right? That's the thing. That's the trouble with with the quarterback position, right? If you draft a quarterback, you know you're pretty much starting from square one. But what other options are out there? I think a lot of a lot of the Raiders fans who say, "Well, Carr out," he's you know, just an average quarterback, doesn't push the ball down the field, blah, 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 you know. And then it's like, yeah, I kind of agree. He's, he's not he's not like Aaron Rodgers or anything like that, but what else is out there? Who else are you going to get? Unless you could trade for an Aaron Rodgers, which could be a huge move in the offseason. Or get a Russell Wilson. Whether you can trade for them or whether they opt out, I don't know. You don't think Carr is the biggest issue for the Raiders? I don't think so either. I think I think that I think that offensive line this year. Well, first of all, I think they lost two key guys early in the season that they thought were going to be on the offensive line. You know, they've been relying a lot of youngsters and everything, so. So that offensive line either, either has to be, you know, you have to hope for a natural progression, evolution for that offensive line, along with maybe some some offensive line additions, you know, some, some guys that have already been in the league who are solid, you know. They gotta rework that offensive line for sure. Got a Josh Hart autograph for the Pelican. That'll be for Nico. Do you think they could use Mariota's arm a little bit more too? I think that was the plan. But I think early in the season, he was just battling injuries and then just never kind of got never kind of got settled into the the season I want to say until until the later weeks and I don't think they really had the opportunity to start working him into the offense but yeah I mean the couple times you saw him out there I thought was was pretty good but you kind of knew who's going to run it the entire time you know but 
I forget what his contract situation is. He is he. On, I don't know if he's on a two-year deal or just a one-year deal. Maybe just on a one-year deal. So, I don't know. I'm not I'm not convinced that Mariota is like starter level, but it'd be interesting to see him get used more often. You know, sometimes Derek Carr isn't the most mobile of quarterbacks. And a lot of times when he is on the move, it doesn't it usually result in an interception or fumble sometimes. It doesn't, doesn't really protect the ball as well as you want him to when he, when he takes flight. But yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested to see, see a little more Mariota, see what he can do. In, in, in specific packages, especially in the red zone where the where the Raiders have struggled. Of course, part of that's also <laughs> their offensive line with untimely penalties in the red zone, which is what we saw yesterday. Logan, what's going on? Anthony Edwards, we got to find some parallels of this guy, Joshua, with the T Wolves. Logan, is, are your Packers playing the Niners? Yeah, I think I think early. I don't know what the early early line is, but I feel like the Packers. We're going to take care of the Niners somewhat easily. Packers have a lot of rest, playing at home. And Rogers' toe should be fine.
purple Emmanuel quickly solid too. That'll go to the Knicks. Will. All right, final quarter of this break. About another 30 minutes or so to go. Here in part one, I'll do a hit and autograph, a little Anthony Edwards LaMelo and autograph recap at the end of this. And we'll take a quick little break. Go through some orders, add some stuff to the schedule. We might be booked for the night, depending on what else is sold out after this. And then we'll, uh, and we'll go to part two of the next case right here. It should be in about another hour and a half to two hours. I think they reseed Logan after the wild card round, so Packers would be facing whoever the lowest seed is that has advanced in the NFC. That might be the Niners. Evan is confirming 49ers, Packers. And Bucks will host the winner of the Rams Cardinals game. Everyone had the first quarter under, right? Evans, a Tampa Bay fan, was hoping to see Dallas. And not the winner of the, uh, yeah, Rams, Cardinals, a little more, a little more tough. Another Cole Anthony for Orlando, Will. If next weekend Raiders play the Eagles, who would be favored? Well, they wouldn't be able to play each other, Mike Tower, because Raiders are an AFC team and the Eagles are an NFC team. But if you're saying they met in the Super Bowl, that would be a difference. I don't know. I would imagine it, it would depend on the way in which the way in which uh, both teams had played. Through to, to get to that point. But I guess if they just randomly played each other, Mike, is that if I mean if that's your scenario? In some, some random regular if it was like a regular season game? I think the Raiders would be favored. Because the Raiders kept up with the Bengals right until the end. They were nine yards away, nine, ten yards away from tying that game. And the Eagles just struggled for three and a half quarters. I'll bet the Raiders would be favored by neutral site. Maybe Raiders minus, would probably be a weird number, minus five or something like that. Fonick was saying, Evan, would you rather see the Cardinals or the Rams? Evan's saying, I'd rather see the Cardinals.
next box. How's everyone liking this uh, this super wild card weekend? A couple games on Saturday, a few games today, a Monday night game. I like it. cases. New case of Donner soccer just so I have no idea. Luis, what what's the uh I figure I feel like you can just kind of math that, right? Are they twenty box cases? Another Lamello for Jesse. Forget how many, are there 20 boxes in Donner's soccer? There's 20 boxes, then one through 10 would be, one through 10 would be the first case. So I'm assuming we opened up a second case. Did a did a kaboom? Did we end up seeing a kaboom with Jason over the weekend in that Donner soccer case? I don't know if this holds for the playoffs, but people say that the um, that the first quarter under tends to tends to hold. 
a good chunk of the time. A good chunk, I don't know what that means. Maybe over 50%? Over fi maybe 60%? But first quarter unders tend to be like 9.5 or 10. Or the total cent tends to be 9.5 or 10 or something like that. And a lot of times that under... A lot of times that under hits. I don't know. Just look at some, some box scores. The last handful of games. We got a Jordan and Wara. Nico with the Bucks. Second to last box. Good luck. We'll uh, what, what are we gonna do? We'll uh, do a little recap at the end. Lamelo, Anthony Edwards, other low numbered cards and autographs. So we'll do a quick little recap after that final box over there, and that'll conclude part one of this break. I'm going to go through some orders, readjust the times on the schedule. So I think we might be, this took a little bit longer than I thought. But we'll readjust some times, go through some orders, see what else we can add to the schedule. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. We saw some. We saw an Anthony Edwards autograph, which was awesome. But maybe some color on this on these Anthony Edwards would be cool too. Hollow Sadiq Bay is pretty cool too. A little bit of some surface issue right there, but we'll go to the Pistons. That'll be for Joshua.
Wow. Is that a pick six or a fumble six? Scoop and score? What happened? Ooh, Williams fumbles it. Picks it up. Pops out TJ Watt. Scoop and score. Wow, what if this... The Steelers win this game. Purple LeBron James, nice little color match. Lakers, that'll be for Nico. Nice, my house, LeBron James, hollow. Looks like a pretty sharp card there. And there you go. That's part one of the dual case break of 2020-2021 Panini Donruss Optic Basketball Retail Edition. This is case one of two. If you're looking for two, it'll be in the next video. There should be a link in the uh, descript as well. Here is a quick little recap. You know, obviously it's retail, so we're looking more for parallels of big names like that. But there's some autographs in here too. Nice purple Lamello, purple Obi Toppin. The Anthony Edwards auto, strong. Obi Toppin hollow. Lamello ball hollow. So pretty nice stuff. We'll see you in the next video for part two. Bye-bye.